Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, my name is Edward Robinson. I'm a senior writer with Bloomberg News, and uh, we are here for the uh, late afternoon paddle. I just want to thank you all for hanging in there, because we're going to have some fun talking about uh, financing fintech growth in Europe. This is, this is an absolutely critical piece of the whole fintech story. And uh, we have, I'm, I'm just so honored to have a fabulous panel of, uh, of venture capitalists and investment bankers here who are going to share with us what the growth capital picture looks like in, in Europe. And I just would like to start, if I may, with um, a perception. And the perception is uh, that when it comes to later stage startups in the European, in the European markets, there's the growth capital, the, the late stage capital is not as prevalent, it's, it's, it's harder to find, it's not as developed an ecosystem. I think the perception follows on too that uh, institutional investors uh, in Europe, uh, from pension funds to insurance companies, either don't have the proclivity uh, nor the ability perhaps to really put a lot of capital at risk in a venture capital play or a private equity play, the same way that we see in the United States where there's, there's a, just a lot more institu institutional capital flowing into that. And that has ramifications on fintech, on especially as fintech evolves and matures and we start reaching a point where a lot of companies are getting to that stage, they've got revenue, they've got profits, and they really need that kind of growth capital. Now, that's the perception. Let's find out what the reality is. Uh, John, perhaps you'd like to kick us off. You're at TCV. You, you, this is your specialty. Sure. So just uh, very quickly, my name is John Rosenberg. I'm a general partner with TCV, uh, and we are one of those uh, firms that provide growth capital to later stage technology businesses. Um, Ed and I were talking about this a bit earlier, and uh, I actually would take issue with that, with that comment, just given the, the level of competition that we might have for really interesting growth stage financial technology companies. Um, Europe seems to have uh, very significant centers in London, in Stockholm, in Berlin, and likewise, where we're seeing great businesses being built and grown, certainly here in Paris, and at least as far as the really attractive ones are concerned, and there are many of them, we see quite a, we see quite a bit of competition for investment. So I would say maybe the opposite, that there actually yeah. is quite a, bit of, uh, quite, quite a bit of capital, and more coming every day in the form of uh, larger private equity firms who might be moving into the growth equity market, uh, sovereign wealth funds and big pension funds. Uh, so it seems to be a really growing ecosystem, and a lot of that is being driven by the number of opportunities which are also growing. Is there a particular bellwether deal that you would highlight, say in like the last 12 months, that really was kind of a jolt or really was encouraging? Or um, not necessarily. Uh, you know, there's there's been there's been several of them. We have we have a portfolio that presented a portfolio company that presented earlier here uh, mm -hmm. called World Remit, which is a, a terrific business in the money transfer area. Mm -hmm. um, and Ishmael was uh, has spoken on a couple of panels today. Um, but there's loads of there's loads of been loads of deals that uh, that have occurred, and we think there's a there, that opportunity is only growing. I see. I see. Good. Arno. Tell us, about, tell us about your organization. It's a very interesting uh, uh, bank. You're, you have state backing, but you're deeply involved in supporting startups. And, and perhaps after you describe what it is that, that your organization does, can you just kind of put it in the context of the French startup scene now, especially in the Macron era? Yeah, sure. So BPI France, we are a very French organization, as you can guess from the name. Um, very specific, probably the closest thing to us, uh, if you look at the US, is Silicon Valley Bank. So somehow we are a state-owned Silicon Valley Bank. We have 75 billion euros of assets, 2,500 people, five, uh, 5050 agencies across France, and we are 100% dedicated to financing growth companies in France. So we lend like 15 billion euros per year to French companies, and we invest in equity around 2 billion euros per year. Among that, we have a 1 billion euro large venture fund, which is dedicated to growth high-tech companies. Um, and the perception from ourselves is exactly the same as TCB. There is capital, for sure. There is capital in France. We have great uh, VC funds, which are, which are now the leaders in Europe, I guess. Uh, I'm the, I don't guess, I'm sure. Uh, many of them. So there is a lot of equity <coughs> from private VC funds, including growth stage. You look at Kingsight, you look at Partech, you have a lot of them waiting to invest a lot of money. You have 5 billion euros 
uh, of dry powder in French VC funds. And how would you define growth stage from your perspective? Uh, growth stage to me uh, goes from late venture, so still a bit DA negative, uh, but let's say more than 50 million euros of round uh, of capital okay. up to, uh, you know, wh whatever. <laughs> Somehow, that's the interesting point. What, what is whatever? But it can, from what we see, in, what, from what we see in France, most of the times it's 100 to 200 million euros. It's seldom more than that. Very seldom more, more than that. Okay. Basically. Sean, would you agree with John's sentiment that the growth capital is alive and well and flourishing in, yeah, in Europe? So my name is Sean Park. I'm a mostly early stage, sort of up to Series A, Series B. Although we follow on in companies, and uh, you know, when you are an early stage investor, it's actually a super important question, right? Because you have to understand the capital trajectory of the companies. Um, you got to make sure that uh, the winners uh, can get finance to profitability or exit or whatever it might be. And I think it's a bit more nuanced than that. Um, they're absolutely at, at, and this is all about jargon or semantics, growth private stage equity. You're super competitive. Um, there's enough capital for everyone. It's slightly different market dynamics than the U.S., but, but I don't think capital availability is an issue. Um, there's maybe two types, two places where there maybe is a little bit of a gap, certainly versus the U.S. or, or even Asia, is sort of late-stage venture, so EBITDA negative. Um, you know, oftentimes that'll show up at Series B or C, maybe D, depending on how the company's been financed, but that place where they need 20 or 30 million dollars, but they're not quite, um, they're certainly not profitable, and they might be burning a lot of cash, and, and there's just, I think the types of investors or the mentalities of the growth stage investors is maybe a little bit more, l l less broad, so there's, there's fewer, the, there's not investors that are interested in that space, and then the other place, and I'm not so sure this is a bad thing um, for society, but it could be a bad thing for particular companies, is, is the, the company that needs a giant growth venture round, like where the, the, the right, um, the winning chess move is to raise $200 million and own the market, you know, far before it's a private equity size type company. That I don't think exists in Europe. Does that um, exist in the U.S.? A little bit. There's a few of these mega, you know, people like, uh, you know, people like Sequoia and Andresa Horowitz, NEA, they can write those checks. Now, they're not common, right? right? But they have the right. ability to write those checks. In Europe, I don't think anyone does. I was super happy to see, A, because they're amazing people, but I was super happy to see Atomico's last fund, which is 800 million. It's not quite in that league, but I think part of their thinking, I don't, you know, is that that'll give them optionality and you know, they won't have a lot of competition. So when those, they're very special, they don't come along often, but when those companies come along, um, you know, people like Atomic, Index has some bigger funds, some growth funds, but, you know, it's a buyer's market if you're in that space in Europe. Okay. Whereas in the States, there's a bit more competition, and then, of course, you've got folks like SoftBank, and then the big Chinese, like, some of the sizes of the venture rounds that happen out of China, or, you know, for a little guy who operates right. in the U.S. and Europe. Right. Yeah. Frightening. But David, you're, you manage a San Francisco-based yeah. venture capital firm. Tell, give us your perspective coming to Europe, looking sure. at the fintech scene right now, and, and as it's maturing, what are the growth capital opportunities you see? Sure. Um, David Blumberg, based in San Francisco and New York and Tel Aviv, and we've invested in U.S., Israel, Germany, Canada, U.K., so we're relatively international for an early-stage fund. And uh, my diagnosis is not perhaps as, as optimistic uh, looking backwards. I am optimistic looking forwards if Europe takes more reforms, and I think the new government here is trying uh, against a lot of odds. There are a lot of vested interests they're trying to fight, but you know, need work reform, tax reform, le regulatory reform, all that still needs to happen. But I just happen to have the numbers uh, here because you know, we're sort of talking vaguely, but let me just give you the specific numbers. They're right here. Basically, in 2015, uh, 16 and 17. In 2015, the real number has been in Asia for these large growth rounds. Yeah. I mean, there were 17 over $100 uh, million dollar rounds, nine in the U.S., only three in Europe. 
Um, in 16, Europe had a goose egg, zero, and there were eight in each of Asia and uh, the US and North America. And in 17, there were 20 in China or Asia, uh, 11 in the US, North America, and four in Europe. So the numbers don't show a vibrant uh, market for the later stage. I think mm -hmm. what I see much more importantly is where is the market? And that's where the companies that I finance, I do the earliest stage, seed and A. When they come to series B and C, they're saying, we want to be where the market is. And so they are often coming to Silicon Valley because that's where the partnerships are. And, and those stats, David, is that, because this is where the, the, sorry, this this definitional is, comes is in, is that late stage venture? Because these are mega again, deals. Yes. This is where and this is early stage private equity, you know, where do those overlap and, and what are the, the definitions? This is FinTech global mega deals, over 100 million. Okay. Okay. And it's uh, from CB Insights. Um, yeah, so, but they wouldn't count, I, I, I imagine they wouldn't count a lot of the private, like the traditional private growth, ec private growth equity deals, uh, like, you know, in the payment space and things like that. Well, FinTech Maybe. would, I would think. But, yeah. yeah, but that, that, that uh, like FinTech. question mark, this is, and this is, I think it's an interesting dynamic. Yeah, in sure. I mean, you asked about landmark <coughs> deals. I mean, just in the payments mm -hmm. area in the last year, we've seen uh, Nets taken private. We've seen WorldPay be uh, has right. been bought for a huge amount of money. Bambora has been bought for well over a billion euros. But those, are, those are buyouts, not sure, growth sure, capital. Sure, right? yeah. sure. But a lot of right. those are growth businesses or, sure. or, or being looked at as yeah, but WorldPay you know, really was Advent and Bain. That was a giant growth deal um, that was done, then IPO and then sold. But I, I don't want to get, but, but that's, I think that's the thing in Europe <laughs> is that they're, they're, it's, if there is capital, it's coming from the private equity side, right? So they're, hmm. they may be stretching down yeah. in size or, you know, down in terms of... Uh, and yesterday I met with a, one of the largest private equity groups um, in France. Yeah. And he said to me, the stage that is missing is what you talked yeah. about, the part that's late venture. Uh, late yeah. venture. Yeah. After so is that Series, series A, C? B, it's yeah. B and C.